we're going to do things a little bit different in this demo today. And instead of showing you all sorts of different features of Greylog and letting you guess at how they might work in a real world scenario, we're going to turn this on its head and actually work a real world scenario utilizing tools that many of you are using today within your environment, including Greylog Security and Illuminate. In front of you, you might be thinking, hey, this doesn't look like the Greylog uh, console. And you'd be 100% correct, this is pager duty. And we're specifically looking at an incident that has been created within pager duty for a high severity Cisco ASA anomaly that was detected via the anomaly detection engine within Raylog security. As I scroll down here, you can see we have a link right within the ticket itself that will actually take me into the messages that generated this anomaly. And so we're gonna hop over to this other tab here, which is just a click through of that link and show you what this looks like. We have a search for the last one hour associated with a high confidence, high grade anomaly for the specific detector in question, which is the Cisco ASA unusual data transfer anomaly detector. As we come into the search uh, message window, I'll open this up and we can start to see details around this anomaly, such as when did the data that associated with anomaly start and stop? How confident are we that this anomaly is actually anomalous? And most importantly, the source IP address of the data involved in this unusual data transfer. From here, I want to see what's actually going on on this machine. So I'm going to click this little arrow here and insert this into a view or into what some of you all may know as a parameterized dashboard and grab this Illuminate Core device investigation drill down, which is part of our core Illuminate content that comes with Greylog security. We want to insert that IP address as an IP address, as you would probably imagine, and go ahead and click Submit here. Immediately, we get to this summary page that starts to give us a little bit of information around what is actually going on within uh, this system specifically. And the first thing I notice is that we have very little activity for many, many hours until all of a sudden, around 3.30 UTC, we suddenly see this massive spike in activity across this machine. I'm gonna pivot into this network tab here to get a look at where is this traffic actually heading. It, as soon as we click on this screen, becomes immediately obvious where the vast majority of this data is being filtered out to, which is this 162.125.85.5 address. And if you're like me, you like to utilize the scratch pad feature within Greylog, which gives me an ability to just take some quick notes to use as we continue to pivot through the product. So I'm gonna write down this 162. 125.85.5 address. And I'm also going to just take note of the IP address that actually triggered the anomaly. So 192.168.92.53. Okay, and I'm gonna save this for a little bit later and go ahead and pivot out of this screen and into my search tree. So if you're thinking from that security mindset, the first thing I want to know is what the heck is that 162 IP address? I'm going to set my time here for 
uh, a day just to make sure we get all of the data that's possibly occurring within this. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a, let me go ahead and grab this IP address here. Do a destination IP our address there. I wanna get specific into our Cisco ASA logs because we are, because that's specifically what triggered the anomaly. And I wanna focus, I wanna really hyper-focus in on that for this moment of, of my investigation. I'm gonna run our search. You can see that we have quite a few messages and it's already been identified by our by our illuminate enrichment process as potentially an address associated with dropbox.com and registered to dropbox inc and so i'm going to scroll here and continue to see that hey this guip is showing taiwan but you know, we're based in the states and we don't do a lot of data ex we don't do a lot of data transfers to uh, to Taiwan specifically. I'm going to continue to scroll down to where we find our destination IP address, which is right here. I'm going to use another new feature associated with Grail Security, which is these right click investigation tools. I want to go ahead and look this up against Virus Total. And we can see that it comes back clean. So we know that this is in fact a Dropbox IP address, which lends the question of, is this a shadow IT issue? Or is this potentially a malicious actor utilizing Dropbox for their, uh, for to, to cover their tracks in some way uh, and, and maybe fly under the radar for this large data exfiltration? So to uncover that, I'm going to pivot away from specifically the destination and dive into our source. We're going to come back to our 192 address here, and we're going to add here source underscore IP, the IP address, get rid of our Cisco events for now, as we've kind of understood what we can from the Cisco side of things at this moment. And we're going to refocus in on Windows. So I'll go ahead and run our Windows events. I'll go ahead and grab our Windows logs and go ahead and run this search here. Immediately, due to the color coding and the message summaries that are included with Greylog security, we're starting to get a picture of what's going on here. Okay. We can see that this device is called S Shell's workstation and that we have a pretty large number of login failures associated with this username S Shell's followed by a success. And that's about all that we have on this box uh, during this time associated with this IP address. So really quickly, we were able to go from a anomaly and walk backwards into where, where that data was flowing to, how much data it was so far, and potentially an entry point into the attack. Now I'm gonna stop here with this brute force and show you another another place where you would have where we would have also caught something associated with this which would have been around the brute force and looking at our events and so you can see here that yet another illuminate event this potential brute force attack greater than 10 failed login attempts in a short period of time was also triggered for this and had we had this set up to uh create an event or create an incident within PagerDuty, we would have seen that created there as well. 
Lastly, to look at this from yet a third angle, I want to come to our new security overview page. The security overview page is where we can really dive into what's going on with the health of my organization from a security perspective. As I come in here, we can start to look at the different things going on at the user level, maybe things that are unique to different users. We can also look into our network activity and we can see that there's a very obvious spike that happens right around that 330 mark that we saw our data exfiltration explode. We can also identify the IP address that that exfiltration is coming from. And lastly, we can come to the anomaly page and actually get pointed out to us right in the middle in red here are one high grade anomaly, which means that it is highly anom anomalous, which we can pivot into to see that it is in fact our Cisco ASA unusual data transfer anomaly. Now I know we breezed through this really quickly in a short period of time, but there's a lot of directions we can continue to go with this. We could continue to go down the route of investigating our sysmon logs and understanding really what happened on that box at a process level so between that brute force success to the data exfiltration how did that attack actually happen and how did they how did, were they able to execute that and it's possible that as, as we investigate along that path we would have found tools hashes additional ip addresses that would have been caught by our threat intelligence as well so this is just one quick example of things that Greylog, the Greylog security is designed to detect and respond to and show you a little bit of a day in the life of what it looks like to actually run this tool.